CBS News special report. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington. A major new escalation in the Middle East. Tonight, Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It involves dozens of drones launched from Iranian territory. A first. This is in retaliation for Israel's bombing of Iran's consulate in Syria earlier this month, which killed a number of senior leaders of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Earlier today, Israel shut down all school activities in anticipation of an attack. The United States has been helping Israel tonight, shooting down some drones. There is significant concern that this could widen the ongoing Israel-Gaza war to more of the Middle East. President Biden returned to the White House earlier from Delaware. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayyab is in Tel Aviv. MTS, tell us what you are seeing and what you are hearing on the ground. We do an extremely worrying night here in Israel, where in the last hour alone, we've heard the sound of sirens and loud booms, including in areas right across the country, which has just rattled so many people after dozens of drones and potentially missiles entered Israeli airspace. Or airspace, rather. In fact, I believe we have some footage of that. Again, you can hear the sound of sirens blaring, and you can see some of those interceptions. Now, we understand the U.S., Israel, and the Jordanian military uh, intercepted much of that, and so too has Israel's incredibly sophisticated missile defense systems. We also understand that Israel's war cabinet is meeting in Tel Aviv here at this very hour, and we're also hearing reports that there is at least one casualty. Again, reports that there is at least one casualty. The concern is that could change in the coming hours following this unprecedented attack from Iran on Israel, inside Israeli territory, something Iran has never done, but warned it would, as you so rightly said, following last week's strike on its embassy in Damascus, destroying that building and killing that senior commando. Now, very quickly, the U.S. embassy here in Jerusalem has told all U.S. government employees to shelter in place until further notice, and according to a security alert, rather, that as these drones and missiles continue to be launched at Israel, that there's a lot of concern here for the safety of people. Uh, and again, finally, we've heard from Iran's foreign ministry, which said that they were responsible for tonight's attack. Weijia. MTS, thank you. I want to bring in Face the Nation moderator and chief foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan. Margaret, the U.S. has said for days now that this attack was imminent. And we know today that the U.S. shot down one Iranian drone at least. Can you talk about how much the U.S. played in deterring this attack. U.S. deterrence has been a factor here, and this attack was so well telegraphed by Iran. They said they would do something. They took a week to do it since that initial April first attack on Iranian generals in Syria. They viewed that as an attack on their sovereign territory, said they would respond, sending slow-moving drones saying you're going to do something. All of that indicates, as they have said both publicly and privately, that they are not looking for conflict with the United States and are trying to calibrate a response. And there's been a flurry of diplomatic activity with U.S. passing written messages to Iran through intermediaries, having others call and urge Tehran not to escalate this further. So we know there are U.S. aircraft, as you, as you mentioned, there are U.S. vessels in the region to try to also underscore that the United States stands by militarily its ally Israel here. But the U.S. is also advising Israel on what their response to this will be. And tonight we are continuing to hear from Iran through a tweet it sent through its United Nations mission. I want to share this with our viewers. They say that this matter can be deemed concluded. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime, from which the U.S. must stay away, in all caps. Margaret, they claim it's over. They also have a warning for the U.S. What do you make of this? 
It, it's fascinating to claim it's over before a single drone had even made it into Israeli airspace. The timing there was notable, and it indicates that they are not looking to further escalate from this, that they are responding and they don't want to draw the U.S. in. The U.S. has directly warned is Iran not to attack U.S. personnel and facilities in the region, but we do know that U.S. embassies throughout the region are on high alert, that in Israel, in Lebanon, Americans have been told not to travel to certain areas, to stay in well-defended spaces. So this is really going to be, in many ways, uh, a wait and see. Will there be casualties? How much of an impact is there on the ground? That will then determine the Israeli response. The United States is really trying to keep Israel from the escalation risk that could happen here, really trying to keep them from making this into a wider regional war. And, of course, that is exactly what the president has been talking about all day with his national security advisors at the White House. That is where we find CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand. Natalie, the president convened his entire national security team. He came back early from Delaware. What are they doing tonight? We're talking the top administration officials from the defense secretary, secretary of state, CIA director, national security advisor met in the situation room with the president as this began unfolding. He tweeted uh, this message a short time ago and really reemphasizing that message that U.S. commitment to Israel's security against threats from Iran and its proxy is ironclad. As you know, Ouija, as he told you yesterday, that is a message that has been clear uh, from the White House ahead of this attack. It's also being echoed by congressional leaders who are starting to put out statements and post on social media, including Senate Foreign Relations Chair Ben Cardin, who is also cautioning Iran against widening this or escalating further. Natalie Brand at the White House, thank you. Our continuing coverage streaming on CBS News 24-7 and at cbsnews.com. We hope you join us. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington. I'm Michael George. You were just watching our CBS News special report on the ongoing Iranian drone attacks on the state of Israel. This in response to a deadly attack on the Iranian consulate earlier this month in Syria. Now, let's recap what we know right now. It's around 3 a.m. in Tel Aviv. And this is really an unprecedented attack by Iran, uh, sending drone attacks directly uh, towards Israel. We have heard from the U.S. military and some other allies, Jordan included, that they have intercepted some of these drones, uh, the Iron Dome system, we have seen video of that in Jerusalem and Bethlehem of the Iron Dome being activated. We don't yet know the casualties, uh, but there's a lot of concern about escalation, the possibility of this expanding into a broader conflict. We know that President Biden has cut short a trip to Delaware. He is now uh, meeting with his national security team, as is Israel's uh, counselors right now meeting. Uh, to discuss this very early morning in Israel right now. Iran saying through their mission to the U.N. that this matter is concluded, but warning Israel and the U.S. to not escalate the situation. So a lot of developments uh, continuing to happen early morning hours in the Middle East uh, with a lot of concern about whether this will escalate and what Israel's response will be. For now, we're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a few minutes. Mr. President, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Does this carrier strike group stand ready? It's just incredible to see there's an active search and rescue operation going on 12 hours after this accident. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. I had progressively fallen deeper into the world of online sports betting. The risk is the rush. What do you think is driving the spike in popularity? I think it's legality. If it's legal, I'm going to use it. There are ways to bet when you are 18. We've created an epidemic of child gambling. You can't walk into a male dormitory in a college campus without sports betting happening. It's America's most neglected problem. I use sports betting as a way to escape, when in reality, I'm choosing self-destruction. Whatever I had left, it was gone. The purpose of the industry is to get you to play to extinction. And that means until all your money is gone.
Stories start with the who, what, when, and where. But it's why it's important to you that matters most. Knowing what to ask is how you open the door to a deeper understanding. See you on Primetime, streaming free everywhere. An original documentary from CBS Reports. That desired farm is a wonderful place to raise children, and it still is. Promises broken. Black Americans have been the target of racism and discrimination pretty much from the time they acquired ownership in the land. Costing black farmers hundreds of billions in generational wealth. They did everything to make sure we were run off that land. But communities are uniting to continue the fight. Collective ownership is powerful to keep their land and their dreams alive. To watch my children play on land that we own means everything. To land is power. Most definitely. 40 Acres and a Mule, now streaming on the free CBS News app. People with developmental disabilities were once sequestered by the hundreds of thousands in institutions. Many of our fellow citizens are suffering tremendously because lack of attention, lack of imagination, lack of uh, adequate manpower. Disability activists have since torn down barriers blocking them from living at home or in the community. We conclude that Title II of the ADA requires states to provide community-based treatment for persons with mental disabilities. But of the 16,000 people who remain in state-operated institutions, half are in five states, and Illinois is one of them. I don't want to live in the institution. It makes me feel discriminated against. Do you think there are people living in institutions in Illinois that don't need to be living there? Yeah, because they're proving it as soon as they get out. Hello, I'm Michael George. We're continuing to cover Iran's unprecedented retaliatory strike towards Israel. This is a response to a deadly attack on the Iranian consulate earlier this month in Syria. It is just about 3 a.m. in Israel. Uh, Israel's military says over 100 drones were fired from Iranian territory. The IDF says its air defenses are prepared for the attack. Uh, America, uh, Israel's allies, including the U.S. and Jordan, saying they're intercepting drones. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says its war cabinet is meeting in Tel Aviv tomorrow. Uh, now, this attack marks the first time that Iran has ever launched such a large military assault on Israel. So we're going to take you right now to our coverage from our partners at the BBC as they continue to follow the developments. That it, you know, that it only wants to survive, and if it does this, it's really signed its own death warrant. But obviously, Iran did this, and uh, I'm sure many people now, when they wake up, they will be worried about what Israel's response would be. Of course, many Iranians, given the huge legitimacy crisis that the government is suffering, that the whole regime has been experiencing ever since, as you know, the Women, Life, Freedom movement, the, the protests that were put down, uh, that legitimacy crisis is still ongoing. There is a lot of 